Good morning family, welcome to Restoration City Church. My name is co-pastor Caroline Smith. I would like you to share this page with family and friends. Please join with me as we open up in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks, O oh God, for this day which you have made. We may not be in our own church building today, but Father, we ask that wherever we are in our homes, Lord, that your presence will be with us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Join with us for a time of worship.
Wasn't that a wonderful time of praise and worship this morning? I felt the presence of God here with us. Now we're going to have a time some of our members would like to share their testimonies. from the Brown Bennets. Hi everyone, we just want to wish you love and blessings at this time here. Um, just hope everyone is coping well, holding up during this difficult time for us all. Um, I'm not sure how you guys are using your time, but we're using this time just to spend a bit of time together, a bit of time to rest, um, time to draw closer to each other, time to draw closer to God, and hopefully as well to achieve certain goals we've all set out for, right? Yeah. Yep. So I don't know what you guys are doing, but you know, one thing we've been encouraged to do is to use this time to find something perhaps that we haven't done, that we've always wanted to do, that we've always wanted to learn, um, whether it's to grow spiritually, physically, whether it's to do more exercise, whatever it may be, um, to use this time, you know, not just to worry about what's happening at the moment, but to use it as a time to work on our development and to find the peace and the grace within this all because we know definitely that there is a lot of grace that God has given us he's kept, he's kept us, we're alive and we're well and we hope you are too stay safe and stay home bye hi guys, how are you all doing? I pray by the grace of God you're all doing well it's a beautiful day this winter that God has given unto us I thank the Lord that we have, have this time that we can come together may not be in person but we can come together through technology. It's a wonderful tool that God has given unto us. I love you guys. I miss you all so much. I miss the hugs. I miss the smile. I miss the personal contact. But by the grace of God, we will be able to do this again soon. I'm just enjoying nature. I'm enjoying what the Lord has given unto me, surrounded by nature, surrounded by loveliness, and I am appreciating it. I'm just taking this time to get closer to God and just appreciate this time. I love this time of year, the springtime, when everything that seemed to be withered and dead has come to life, just like we will do so very soon by the grace of God. I love you guys. I appreciate you all. Blessings to you. Take care. Bye. Hi everyone. No one would have believed at the start of 2020, within a few short weeks, our lives would be turned upside down. No one would have thought it. These are classed as now unprecedented times, but I just wanted to say today that our God is far more remarkable. It's truly greater than any pandemic. When I started to feel anxious and a little overwhelmed about going back to work as a key worker, I thought to myself, you know, I spent far too long and prayed far too hard to cast the spirit of fear out of my life just to let it walk back in again. So I decided to pray over myself. I prayed for the peace, power, love and a sound mind to be restored and it was. So my word of encouragement today is that peace is precious. So to keep your peace, pray for it. Pray for your peace. God bless. Hello, I'm Tuvia and I'd just like to share a seed of encouragement today. Um, I've been spending a lot of time in my garden recently and the Lord's been talking about soil and seed and sowing and reaping. Um, I found a scripture which is Isaiah 32 and 20 and it says, the Lord will greatly bless his people wherever they plant seed, bountiful crops will spring up. And so in this time as we are sowing seed and as we are sowing seeds of our faith maybe to our families and seeds of hope to colleagues or you know seeds of love to neighbors i want to encourage you that everything you sow in jesus name you're to expect a bountiful crop and so i am you know planting a seed and joining it with my faith and i expect a bountiful crop to come of it. In Jesus' name, Amen. Greetings from RCC. I bring you greetings from my garden. Giving God thanks for the privilege of being able to do so. For not many at this time are in that position. I give God thanks for all of His provisions that He has made for me. And I continue to enjoy His blessings. I pray, O oh God, that 
he will grant the same unto you, his blessings and his mercies. As we go through our trying and testing time, I pray that God will give you strength and peace at this time to lift you up and to uphold you. To not only to uphold, uphold you, but to strengthen you. And not only to strengthen you, but to be able to stand and withstand in Jesus Almighty. Hello everybody, Shannon here. I just wanted to share a little testimony um, that I have. Um, so we all know that we're in kind of weird times and everybody is not really sure about working situations. A lot of people are getting sacked from their jobs and not having any jobs to go back to once this is all over. And I just wanted to say that um, yesterday I got a letter from my job saying that I actually got a raise so in the midst of all of this craziness and uncertainty when I go back to work I'll be making more money so I thank God for that and I hope that that's an encouragement for you that our God provides. Greetings everyone I just want to give God thanks and praise for his love for his grace and his mercy for life for health and strength he has kept me my family and my friends through what is going on at this moment and I want to bless his name for his word said for those who fear him his angel will encamp around him and for those who fear him they will lack nothing and I just want to bless God I encourage those who are out there today or is listening to me that whatever they are going through just continue to bless the Lord to continue to trust in his word for whatever his word said he will do be blessed. Good afternoon, RCC. Just sharing that I've been able to enjoy this time of Easter, reflecting on the Passover and the children of Israel adored the blood of the Lamb upon their doorpost and were protected by the guardian angel. And this time of Corona, just to stay in the doors, to enjoy the nature around me, to be protected and be reflective and enjoy the serenity and peace. It's been a beautiful time. I've really appreciated it and I hope you're all well. Good to see you. Bye. Um, basically, I just wanted to share a short testimony with everyone. And um, basically, I want to just say that this is what I stand on. It's Isaiah 41, verse 10. I'm not going to read it because it will make it too long, but I just want to say that, you know, the Lord, he's been really good to us throughout all this COVID-19. We're living, we're breathing, we're eating, and I'm still able to work from home, look after my two boys, so I've still got an income. And I know some people haven't and some people are homeless. I've got a roof over my head. I appreciate that. I'm most grateful and thankful to God for that. And I just want to say to everyone out there, you know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just stand on the word. Stand on the word of God for he knows. And he will look after us and protect us. He knows why all this is happening. Um, so, yes stand on the word just be blessed be thankful be grateful hi i'm shalice and i'd like to encourage you with proverbs 3 5 to 6 and it says trust in the lord of all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path and why i read this scripture is because it's one of my favorites it's on my bedroom wall and it's pretty current right now and I want it to be an encouragement to you because the word says trust in the Lord with all your heart and in return he shall direct your path even though you don't understand it so be blessed be encouraged and God bless it's tithes and offering time this is still part of our worship please look at the slides that's coming up right now on your screens What he said in his word, it is mine. I shall have what God has promised me. 
What he said in his word, it is mine. I shall have what God has promised me. What he said in his word, it is mine. I shall have what God has promised me. What he said in his word, it is mine. Are we ready to receive the word of God this morning? Let our hearts and our mind be ready as Apostle Dewa Smith will come and minister the word of God this morning. Good morning to you. This is Pastor Dewa here coming from Restoration City Church in Croydon. I'm so glad that you've taken the opportunity to tune in uh, to this uh, broadcast this Sunday morning. And I just want to uh, thank you for stopping by. Um, I want to just let you know that though you are probably looking at different things, but God has allowed you to be on this particular um, broadcast at this particular time. So I believe there is a word for you. So I just want to encourage you to, to stay tuned and so I can share what God has put in my heart for you for this day. I want to thank those who are viewing from different countries and different nations. We appreciate you. We want to thank you for coming along. And of course, all our Restoration City Church members, um, I bless the Lord for you. We do miss you, um, although we do communicate um, by telephone and other means, but there's nothing better than when we can get the opportunity to meet together. So I look forward for us doing that. But we also want to just thank those, um, my son behind the scenes, who is creating these opportunities um, when it comes to the streaming and some of these technologies. I know that there are some churches that are struggling in terms of how to get their heads around this type of technology to be able to minister the gospel. So I appreciate the the um, gift and the skills and the ability to be able to sit in front of you and share the word of God for us today. We do want to continue to pray um, for our government and those on the front line who are working hard during this period of time. We just want to thank all the frontline staff and frontline people who are doing an incredible job and i know for many this is a very tough time and so um in times like this is important that we go to the word of god and we see what the word of god says and and that's where we draw our encouragement from this is where uh, this the word of god becomes our food for us this is what we feed on um in in times like this so i really what i wanted to share about is how do we have hope uh, when we're in such troubled troubled times where did how how was we a believer how are we supposed to be during these kind of difficult times that we are in we know that nothing is lasts forever and what we're going through is a season of challenges a, a season of difficulties so i want to address this and this may not be a message for everyone but this is a message that i want, really want us to to become real and one of the things about when we uh, are, are dealing with god it, he, it, it's so important that we might put up a pretense, we may put up a, a facade with one another, we may put up a, a mask when it comes to each other, but when it comes to God, we really can allow those masks to be removed and we really can just be absolutely real with him. And he understands, he understands the challenges, he understands the pain, he understands what we're going through. And that's why he has given us his word to, to bring comfort to us. And so I want to go into our reading today. And it's one verse is um, from Romans chapter 15 and verse number 13. Romans chapter 15 and verse number 13. And whilst you're turning to that, I want to just appreciate my wife, co-pastor Carolyn, um, who has been a, an incredible support for me during my recovery. I'm still not 100 percent there i'm on i'm getting there as, as best as i can um, but i want to appreciate and thank her so much and i want to thank uh, cleveland and tubi and the others who are behind the scenes um praying with the church and ministering and, and sharing and making sure that the people are, are, are felt together so I, I bless the lord for that and i bless the lord for the testimonies that are coming through people have contacted us to to let us know that they have enjoy the word of god and I, I i i that's really what our heart is is that 
we can get into the word of God. And what we have seen by the ways of people coming online, we've seen more people coming online listening to the sermons and listening to the message of God than we actually have people coming through the door. So that's really encouragement. That's a really encouragement. And this is a, another stream of communication that we really do need to uh, take advantage of. So today's message is really hope through troubled times. And that's where we are. The, the Bible tells us that that we should not be shaken in mind. And when Paul was writing to the church in Thessalonians, in Thessalonians chapter 2, he says that we should not be shaken in mind. Neither should we be troubled by uh, spirit, nor by word, or by letter. There's things which are coming and that's happening that can cause us to be really troubled and, and really perplexed. Um, and, and of course, naturally, people want answers to what is going on. So in the word of God, in Romans chapter 15 and verse number 13, it says this. It says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, the God of hope. And so in the context of this, um, I want to go to, just go to the Romans chapter, the same chapter, but let's go um, from verse one, just to put a context um, to, to what I'm saying, that um, Paul says in, in chapter one, he says, um, it's, sorry, in Romans 15, verse number one, it says, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities um, of those who are weak. Those of us who are strong needs to, to bear the infirmities of the weak and not just to please ourselves. In one of the translations, it says that we ought to... Um, we who are strong have an obligation to bear with the feelings of the weak. Another one says that we should be considerate of those who are sensitive about certain things. So in, in this particular time, um, there are people who will naturally do better than some. There's got to be some in terms of these, this time that we're in who are the strong ones who at this particular time when things are extremely difficult, it's really strange that some of us don't really know what we have inside of us until we're really put under pressure. And there are some people who will excel uh, when you challenge them. There's some people when they love a challenge and the more the challenge is, is the more they rise to the top. And and that's great. Those, are, those who have that ability, those who, who are in that position where you can rise to the top and you are strong. Um, it is great that that happens, but the strong ought to look out for those who are not, um, at this moment, may not feel as strong as you. And may, there are some people who at this time may be really challenged. And sometimes with the church, we all try to put on this kind of a persona that we are, you know, we have this spiritual language that when people ask how we are, you know, we're blessed, we're highly favored, we're doing great, and everything's fine. But really behind the closed doors, we are struggling. And and I want us to understand that when we are, when we're dealing with God, we don't have to pretend. We don't have to be a fake. We can be true to who we are. And knowing that God has given us resources, God has blessed us, and he has put things in place to help us that if we are one of these people who can honestly say at this moment, um, I'm, I'm struggling at this moment, this is not um, easy for me. Um, we know that when we confess our faults one to another, we can get that help and support in, in able to, to move forward. So those of you who are strong, ought to, we ought to be looking out for those who are finding at this particular time that things are difficult. We need to be looking out for them. In verse number two, it says, in verse number two, it says, let every one of us please his neighbor for, for his good to edification. 
In other words, how I see this is that we ought to be looking out for our neighbours, looking out for one another on how we can help to edify them or to bring them to a place where we build people up. We, we, we live, we've been living in a culture where it, there's so much discouragement and so much negative words that's been said in, in different forums. There's a lot of negativity. But we who are the believers, and I spoke about this last week, we who have received this ministry of reconciliation, that our role as, as ministers, and especially for those of us in Restoration City Church, our job is to, our, our mandate is to build people up is to edify people, to strengthen people. And so we look around us and we look, and we should be looking at who could we encourage? Who do, you know, who do we have a word of the Lord for? Who are we praying for? When you are doing your morning devotion or whenever time you're doing devotion, who is on your prayer list? And, and are you looking out for those who are, who are, are challenged at this moment, who's finding things extremely difficult? Um, and what we need to be able to do in verse number four, it says, for whatever things, uh, sorry, verse number three says, for even Christ pleased not himself, but it was written, the reproach of them, the reproach that fell on, uh, on thee, fell on me, that Christ did not set out just to please himself, but there is a, there's a certain way of how we ought to be like him. Verse number four says, for what except for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture that we may have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like minded one towards another. So we're supposed to have the same mind towards one another. But for some people normally they are they do fine. Some people uh, don't necessarily have an issue but right now we're finding that we are facing for some people extremely difficult and hard times that's ahead of us for some people in terms of their businesses some of you are business owners and people who are business owners they don't know what they're going back to they don't know um, if literally when they go back will they have a business to go back to and so some of this is is playing on their mind because some of the business people, they they provide employment for people. So it's not just about themselves. They, they may be wor wor wondering and, and, and worried about how are, how are the bills going to be paid? How are we going to pay for staff who needs the finances? For some people, and, and you can imagine for some of the pastors and leaders at this moment who are, are doing similar to what I'm doing now, who's on a broadcast, who's preaching and that lot, they also not sure what's going to happen when they go back to church because the bills are still racking up and the bills are still having to be paid and sometimes during this period of time you have people who are supporters of the the ministry who will support the ministry through their giftings through their tithes through the offering but there's some people who just don't understand that um, and they don't necessarily tithe they don't give offerings but they would like to 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 come to the church and for some people they don't understand without the tithes and without the offering um the churches are going to be in a lot of trouble because whilst we can meet in in um in the homes that's great but what about um the buildings the buildings are still um having to be kept and the bills are still having to be paid and so there's a lot of pastors at the moment who's also have put up their homes as part of collateral for a particular church building um, and so this is worrying times. This is naturally worrying times. Uh, a lot of bishops, pastors, and, and leaders who, who's also salaries depends on what's what's coming in. And not everybody has a great, not many churches are in that category or brackets of having large finances. So at this particular time, a lot of people are really being shaken. Some people are shaken through their health. Some people we know have contracted the, this virus and and bless the lord has come through some are still in a challenging position so at this time there are some who may find this hard so how do i as a believer if i want to be real how do i find hope 
when things around me is so difficult and so trying and and so where do i find this hope in at this particular time in in verse number four the bible talks about the word of god that was written aforetime is there for our learning that through patience and comfort of the scriptures we might have hope so we turn to the scriptures what the what he's saying is paul was saying we turn to the scriptures to find comfort we turn to the scriptures to find hope at especially at time like this this is the time we go the word of god becomes food for us and that's why it's so important to believe in the lord jesus christ because i believe this is a perfect time and you may be watching right now and you may say well i was just tuning in just to see what was going on but this is a word for you that we find that this is the time to find comfort in the scriptures and why we the reason why we're doing these broadcasts is to help direct you towards the word of god that you may feed from the word of god and get the nourishment and the strength that you need so that it can keep you during these difficult times and the bible tells us in 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 the same thing in chapter five in verse number five it says that we should have the same mind towards one another so yes we are different and people react differently to different situations for some you may look at some and you may phone some and for them it's not a problem and you might think am i the only person who is going through a difficult time and some people might just say you know just pull your socks up or just just get it together and and you might be thinking it's not as easy as that because i'm finding it a real challenge and it and and i appreciate and that's why to, today's message is really geared towards the people who are finding that this time is a real challenge and they don't want to be a fake they want to be able to be real and just say how can god help me in these challenging times and we all face that last week we looked at when jesus was in the garden of gethsemane it was a difficult time where he prayed until his sweat became drops of blood and he, he prayed earnestly he prayed hard and he was in a lot of pain and anguish even in 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 prayer so it was in there's times in our lives we don't always find things easy there are times when we do find uh, life could be really challenging and so when we have the same mind not to put anyone down if somebody says look listen i'm struggling will you be able to help me and pray with me that we don't look down at anyone that we are so high because sometimes we ourselves go through some difficulty and all it takes is one more thing added to our plate and it, it, you know it could cause such a, a major problem but in all of this we we have the word of god and and that's why the scripture says that we have to be like-minded towards one another just as christ was towards us the same kind of mindset that god had towards us is the same mindset we need to have towards one another and so um verse number six says that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify god even the father of our lord jesus christ because there's something powerful about when you're going through something and you can still raise your hands and worship there's something powerful about why we we encourage people um like the scripture in isaiah when it says for the barren to sing when you say sing oh barren you'll be kind of wondering why would you ask a barren woman to sing um that sounds insensitive but there's something about worshiping god that is powerful during difficult times it's not because we are asking you and we, we as leaders are insensitive but what we're saying is you it's important in hard times to bring god into the focus because if we don't bring god into focus what happens is we just become overwhelmed with what is going on when peter was in the boat and and he asked the lord lord if is that if that's you bid me to come and Peter stepped and the Lord says come and Peter stepped out of the boat he was fine but until you start to until you start to look around and you you take your focus off of God 
then the things around you becomes overwhelming. And that's how human nature, our human nature, if we, the minute we take our eyes off the Lord, we can be overwhelmed with the storms of life, with the waves, with everything that's going on. It is easy for us to be overwhelmed. And that's why the worship allows us to put our focus on God. And when we put our focus on God, he is able to help us through. And so in as we get to verse number 13, the verse that I, I want to focus on, it says, Now may the God of hope, that he is, I want you to understand, he's, there's many things in scripture that describes how God is for particular people. For some, he's a God of of peace, he's a God of love, he's a, and you know, he's Jehovah Tishkenu, he's Jehovah Jireh, you know, he's Jehovah Shammah, and there's different situations that people's gone through, and when they've gone through that, they associate the name of the Lord with what they've gone through. Paul went through some very difficult times, and um, in the, the book of, um, I believe it's in Acts chapter uh, 27, um, there was a time when, when Paul was being taken from one place to another and he was on a particular boat, a particular ship, and um, he had just finished fasting and they wanted to push out. And, and, and Paul said to, to, to the people who were running the ship, he said, look, I don't think this is a good idea. You know when you have that intuition that's inside of you, when God begins to speak, inside of your spirit and he said I, I don't advise us at this moment that we should be leaving and we should go but they didn't listen to Paul because what happened was the storm seemed to have settled down everything seemed to settle everything seems to be nice and calm and it gave the illusion that there was no problem and so as they began to set sail and I believe they were heading towards Crete as they began to set sail, um, what happened was things started to get really, really rough. I want to see if I can find that, that scripture. Um, I believe it's, it's, in, it's in the book of Acts. I'm just trying to see if I can, if I put it down in my notes. I don't think I have it here. Yeah, it's in the book of Acts. Um, and and as they began to come, the, the Bible described that for a period of time there was no sun, there was no moon, there was nothing. It was absolute pitch black. And Paul described it, he felt at that time as though all hope was gone. Um, and sometimes we, we do get to a situation where we just feel that we are on a journey and it feels like we've been shipwrecked. It feels like we was going, everything was going fine, my life was going fine, the bills were being paid, everything was going good, in a wonderful relationship with my partner, and everything was going good, then all of a sudden, bang, here comes a shipwreck, and, and here comes something that I didn't anticipate was going to happen. And the truth is sometimes we get shook. Sometimes we, we, we have to admit, sometimes it's like, like what Paul was saying, if, if Paul felt, Hang on, I feel like all hope is gone. If the Apostle Paul could say that, where he felt like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. It just seems like everything just seems to be so dark. How do I get through this darkness? Um, as the Apostle Paul begins to describe it, um, we do sometimes come through through situation where we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. For some people, this is like a midnight and this is like a crisis because it's not just the virus is what this has caused and for some this is sleepless nights for some this is very difficult and as i said before we can mask it and put on a spiritual smile but the truth of the reality is there's some things that god does not just take out of our way there's some things that we pray and we say lord will you take this out of the way and the Lord says, no, but I'm going to give you my grace. And with my grace, you're going to go through some things. And that's why for some of you, you might be saying, 
um, why has the Lord just removed these things? Why, why am I still having to face these difficulties and these challenges? Um, but this is where we really have to understand the God in whom we serve. And it's, and it's, it's not just uh, talking about it, but it's actually about believing in God. So this particular verse says, Now may the God of hope fill you. And this is so important. He, he was saying here that we need to be in, in a place where, in, in the scripture it says, um, not only that you are filled with joy, peace in believing, it says, but that you may abound. Um, so there's two things here that we need to look. One is to be filled and the other to be abound. To be filled, in other words, God was saying, the scripture Paul is saying to us, that we as believers cannot go around empty. We cannot go around and be spiritually empty. We need to be filled. We all leak. We all get to a place where there's different things that challenges us. But Paul is saying, we need to get to a place where we are filled. So it says here that, um, now the God of hope, the God of hope. So we want the God of hope to bring three things into our lives. And these are three things that all men are seeking for. We want the God of hope to bring us joy. We want the God of hope to bring us peace and, to, and hope. And this is what we all want. It is, if we don't have hope in our lives, we are in real trouble. We must have hope. And we need to know where hope come from. And so there's three things. He says that the God of hope will bring, bring joy. And these are things that we need in abundance. And I want to tell you that you can only have these things in Christ Jesus. You have, so when we're going through difficulty, people who are going through difficulty, and you may be tuning in and saying, Pastor, I'm one of those who's going through it's very difficult. I'm going through things that's hard, hard. You can only find these things in Jesus Christ and him only. There are other substitutes and other things that's out there. But if you want real joy, what Paul is talking about, that can only come through Jesus Christ. So when we think of joy, we're thinking of, of happiness. Um, and some people think, you immediately think, oh, yeah, is, is for me to be happy um, but joy is much more than just being happy because joy the joy of the Lord is a is a sovereign gift that God gives to us it is a gift the joy of the Lord is a gift because the joy of the Lord becomes our strength and is and in scripture is part of the fruit of the spirit because in Galatians 5 verse 22 it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law so part of the, the fruit part of what god has given to us is joy so if i if i'm in a time now where i'm saying to myself well i i don't feel no joy um happiness comes happiness go but real joy comes from the lord that means i have to go to the source I ha you have to go to the source where joy comes from and God is the God that provides joy so if I need joy in my life right now because things are really difficult then I need to go and find the scriptures that speaks about joy and build my faith up with the scriptures so that I can go to God and draw from him the joy that I need um, likewise he talks about um, the second thing he says that we need to be filled with is to be filled with peace. Um, this is not uh, the peace uh, of man, because John 14 verse 27, Jesus said this, peace I'm going to leave with you. And in, in, in difficult times like this, not only do we need the joy of the Lord, we need his peace. We need his peace to be like an umpire in our lives, to help to balance us. So when there's things, when a letter comes or a word comes or when we turn on the TV and we hear uh, the different announcements, 
that we we do not become shaken but we allow the peace of god to balance our lives so jesus said in in st john 14 27 peace i leave with you my peace i'm going to give to you so peace belongs to the believer it is your right god has given to us peace is your right to have the peace of god and he says not as the world give do i give unto you so in other words there is a peace that comes from the world which is conditional we are not looking for the peace that comes from the world we're looking for the peace that comes from god and the peace you know when you have the peace from god because he says this in, in 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 the same verse it says let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid so if our hearts is troubled and we're afraid then we don't have the peace of god the peace of god allows us to go through different different situations and it keeps us balanced so where there is worry where there's fear where there's all these other uh, um, uh, torments those things you are not from god the believer i should not be having to be tormented and if I'm going through a place where I'm tormented, where I'm going through a place where it's worry and stress, it means I need to go back to the source. I need to go back to, to the God who gives me peace. And so that's what you need to do. Look at some scriptures that speaks about peace. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 says this, And the peace of God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart your hearts and mind through christ jesus so in this particular time we need the peace of god to guard to protect our hearts our emotions our feelings our thinking we cannot allow you cannot allow your emotions to be open and exposed i would not advise you every morning the first thing you do is turn on your tv to hear news that's not going to feed you that's not going to help you it's going to cause you more worry and more stress we need the peace of god we need in this particular time in this season especially now where so many of the families are isolated and we're not able to um mix and uh, as as we we normally would do this is the particular time where you need to guard your heart guard your emotions guard your mind so you begin to filter be careful of the things you're taking in it's kind of sad sometimes i'm seeing on 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 the the messages that some people are just posting so much negative things um that comes to trouble you and so you need to put some of those things you need to block certain people if they're going to keep sending you negative things and doomsday things and a cop apocalyptic things of the end time uh, just some of the things you have to filter you have to guard your emotions you have to take charge of that and allow the peace of god um to guard your heart guard your mind through christ jesus so the question really comes do you have peace at the moment is peace really regardless of what's happening in your life does the lord really have control of you of you and 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 the peace of god is it is it the umpire of your life right now and how much of that peace remember that the scripture says we got to be filled with these things we got to abound um so it's not just having just a little bit we need to abound um in in having more and more and abound means to be filled to the top to the place of overflowing so i need the joy of the lord to be overflowing in my, in my life i need the joy of the lord to be spilling over so it becomes contagious i need the peace of god to be to be overflowing in my life and so if we're in a place where and sometimes we have to be honest sometimes we're in a place where we dull sometimes we may feel dry we may feel empty but we know that we can go to a god who will fill us back up again and today god has blessed us with a new day so we can go to him and be filled ask him to fill you with joy ask him to fill you with peace and here's the third thing the f about about this abundant life that we have in christ and that is the third characteristic is, is to let hope fill our lives that we abound 
more and more in having the the peace of God, in having the sorry the joy of the Lord, in having the peace of God, and having hope. Hope is so powerful, and I need you to understand when we talk about hope, we're not just talking about wishful thinking, um, or or to to have hope and there's no foundation in terms of 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 hope. Hope is the expectation something as good is going to happen. It is an expectation that actually takes a hold of us. Um, and, and it's something we have to possess. Biblical hope is the confidence and expectation based on something of a deep reality or something that is certain. So when it comes to hope that we might get through these crises or we might do that, my hope is not based on scientific experiments. My hope is built and based upon the word of God. My hope comes from God. And so in the New Testament, that's what we, we base our hope on. So hope always has a companion. So hope comes with a friend and the friend is faith. Hope and faith always works hand in hand. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. So when you hope, hope always carries with it him friend. Uh, the friend called faith and the two works hand in hand so in this scripture as I, as I bring a conclusion the God of hope he was saying that the God of hope we've got to understand God by his own divine nature is a God who is full of hope and he is a God that it, that he out of him himself he creates uh, opportunities he creates a way out of nowhere. So even when it seems like you're in the wilderness, you're thinking, how am I going to get out of this wilderness? The God of hope will create a way when you can't see a way out. The God of hope will make a way for you. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation that where I have in my life where I've gone through some very difficult times. I, I recall just one time just just breaking down in, in, in my office, just in tears, because I couldn't find a way out of a situation. I was, I was in such uh, uh, dire problems. I just didn't know how, how am I gonna get through this? And I began to pray, and it wasn't a long-winded prayer, but I called on the God of hope. It was a simple prayer, and you know some of these simple prayers are the most powerful ones. It's not the long ones. It's one that just gets to the point and the prayers just help. You, you ever pray those prayers and all you can really get through is just, is just help. And God began to allow people from different countries were phoning me and just saying, um, the Lord just prompted my spirit to call you. What is it? And I just began to get calls from different places just to, to help build my faith up because I, I just felt I was so overwhelmed what was going on. And, and so this is the God of hope. This is the God who from himself, he brings hope. And out of, out of nowhere, out of an absolute disaster, out of a real problem, out of a place where I could not see the light at the end of the tunnel, God began to open doors for me. He began to create opportunity because he's the God of hope. And not only is a God of hope, he's a God that will supply hope to us. If you're in a place right now where you're thinking, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. We, you know, same challenges for so many pastors. And please, if you're from a different church, please remember to pray for your pastors at this moment. Because for many of the pastors, whilst they are encouraging you, they're going through a hard time. And, and sometimes we just expect pastors, oh, uh, because they're pastors, they're superhuman. They, you know, they've got nothing to worry about. But there's a lot of leaders who are challenged right now. Uh, even though they're preaching, they're challenged. And so we want to pray for them that the God of hope will be poured into our lives. And and so sometimes we do lose sight of God and we lose sight of what is happening. And we, we get caught up with so much stuff around us. And, and, and what we need to do is focus on the God who supplies hope to us. And so I pray that today, um, as, as we begin to 
go through the next few weeks and few days that you begin to pray and ask God to fill you with hope and fill you with all joy and peace in believing. In 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 the scripture, it just says that we need to, and it, it just in conclusion, it was just saying um, in verse number thirteen, now the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope, and it says that you can only abo- you can only abound and be filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do this just by motivational books or positive mental thinking or positive mental attitude. Where we as believers at this moment, where we get hope, where we get joy, where we get peace is all through the power of the Holy Spirit. So today I pray that you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. And the word power here is dynamis. It is like a dynamic or dynamite. It speaks of a dynamic energy that comes. Um, and it, it creates, it's like the power of God energizes us. So even when we do feel in, uh, low and, we've, and sometimes we're feeling we've got such mountains of problems, the Holy Spirit comes in. And through the Holy Spirit, he energizes our spirit. It's like, it's almost though the Holy Spirit comes into partnership with us and all that we need to abound, he begins to fill us with it. So if we feel that I'm in a hopeless situation, the power of the Holy Spirit begins to give us hope that the expectation of a better day, we are going to get through this. And when we get through this, I'm going to be in a better situation than I was before. Uh, the joy of the Lord becomes our strength. So uh, it's not about happiness. Is I'm going to receive the joy of the Lord. And I receive the joy of the Lord through the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5 verse 5 it says, For we through the Holy Spirit eagerly await for the hope of righteousness by faith. And Romans 8 verse 24 says, For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hope for what has already been seen? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait patiently for it. Brothers and sisters, let me encourage you. The sun will shine again. God will make a way through for us. But I encourage you that let us together set our affection on the things above. Let, let's allow our passion to be set back on him. Let's not allow the storms of life where our focus and our faith becomes linked on the things around us. I want to encourage you, for those who are struggling, to go back to the God of hope, go back to the God of joy, go back to the God of peace, and ask him to fill you today. Let's bow our heads and let, let's pray. Let us pray. So Father, we want to thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that now worketh in and through us. And we pray in this time and this season, I pray for my brothers and my sisters, those who are going through a challenging time, not only with this virus, but Father, maybe in their business, in their health, in their homes, in their relationship. Lord, those who are just finding this whole thing overwhelming, those who are challenged mentally, going through a, 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 a mental challenge and psychological battle, just trying to get through one day at a time. God, I place them into your loving hands. And I pray, Father, that where we can be just transparent with you and, and, and expose our weaknesses and, and share our frustration, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come Lord, and just pour hope into our lives, pour your joy into our lives, pour the spirit of peace into our lives. Father, that will equip us to get through this season and get through this time. We thank you that you are the God of hope. And Lord, for many of us, maybe right now we may feel a bit dry, 
We may feel empty, but we ask you to pour your spirit into us. Lord, we cannot do this on our, our own. We need the Holy Spirit. So we surrender even now to you that you will pour your spirit into our lives and fill us, Father, with hope, with joy, and with peace. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And if you're here and you have listened today, I thank you so much for your time. I thank you for tuning in. And if you're here and you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, um, we just have our Restoration City Church email details, which is there. Please communicate, talk to us. If you want someone to pray with you or you want some encouragement, let us know. Email us and let us know. I would be happy to respond, lead you to Christ and and get some information to you where you can be encouraged even though you're in your home and you can still be built up i thank you so much for taking the time to to share um to, to share this precious time with you and please for for next time invite some people along and use your whatsapp use the multimedia streams and invite people along so that we can share as a family together the word of god god bless you in jesus name God bless you all. I hope you were blessed today by, by the service, by the worship team and the word of God that came to us today from our Apostle Delroy Smith. Please stay safe, look after each other, look forward to when we can be together again. God bless you all. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this service today. We thank you, Lord, that we were in your presence, oh God, and we are blessed, oh God, by the word and the worship, oh God. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen.